This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. With less than five weeks before the general election, President Obama and Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney squared off in their first presidential debate Wednesday in Denver, Colorado. For 90 minutes, the candidates faced off over taxes, unemployment, economic regulations, social security, health care, education, partisan gridlock, and other domestic issues. Romney repeatedly attacked Obama's record, often putting the president on the defensive. Many supporters of President Obama have expressed surprise that he never mentioned several of Romney's potential weak spots, including his record at the private equity firm Bain Capital, his vast personal wealth and offshore investments, and his recent remark that 47 percent of Americans are government dependents. Some domestic issues went virtually unmentioned in Wednesday night's debate, including immigration policy, global warming, gun control, incarceration rates and poverty. In addition, some key voices were shut out of the conversation, including those of third-party presidential candidates. Well, as Obama and Romney were facing off at the University of Denver Wednesday night, Democracy Now! was just miles away, airing a special three-hour broadcast expanding the debate. We broke the sound barrier by pausing after President Obama's and Romney's answers to get real-time responses from Jill Stein of the Green Party and Rocky Anderson of the Justice Department. Dr. Stein is a physician from Massachusetts. Rocky Anderson is former mayor of Salt Lake City. We also invited Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson, but he declined to join us. Today, we bring you highlights from our Expanding the Debate special. We begin with debate moderator Jim Lehrer. Let's start the economy, segment one, and let's begin with jobs. What are the major differences between the two of you uh, about how you would go about creating new jobs? You have two minutes, each of you have two minutes to start. A coin toss is determined, Mr. President, you go first. Uh yeah, four years ago, we went through uh, the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Millions of jobs were lost. The auto industry was on uh, the brink of collapse. Uh, the financial system had frozen up. And because of the resilience and the determination of the American people, uh, we've begun to fight our way back. Uh, over the last 30 months, we've seen 5 million jobs in the private sector created. Uh, the auto industry has come roaring back and housing uh, has begun to rise. But we all know that we've still got a lot of work to do. And so the question here tonight is not uh, where we've been, but where we're going. Uh, Governor Romney uh, has a perspective that says uh, if we cut taxes, skew towards the wealthy, and roll back regulations, that uh, we'll be better off. I've got a different view. I think we've got to invest in education and training. I think it's important for us to develop new sources of energy here in America, that we change our tax code to make sure that we're helping small businesses and companies that are investing here in the United States, that uh, we take some of the money that we're saving as we wind down uh, two wars uh, to rebuild America, and that we reduce our deficit in a balanced way that allows us to make these critical investments. Now, it ultimately, it's going to be up to the voters, to you, uh, which path we should take. Uh, are we going to double down on the top-down economic policies that help to get us into this mess, or do we embrace a new economic patriotism that says America does best when the middle class does best? And I'm looking forward to having that debate. Governor Romney, two minutes. This is obviously a very tender topic. I've had the occasion over the last couple of years of meeting people across the country. I was in uh, Dayton, Ohio, and a woman grabbed my arm, and she said, I've been out of work since May. Can you help me? Uh, and yesterday was a rally in Denver, and a woman came up to her with a baby in her arms and said, Ann, my husband has had four jobs in three years, part-time jobs. He's lost his most recent job, and we've now just lost our home. Can you help us? And the answer is yes, we can help, but it's going to take a different path. Not the one we've been on, not the one the president describes as a top-down uh, cut taxes for the rich. That's not what I'm going to do. My plan has five basic parts. One, get us energy independent, North American energy independent. That creates about four million jobs. Number two, open up more trade, particularly in Latin America. Crack down on China if and when they cheat. Number three, make sure our people have the skills they need to succeed and the best schools in the world. We're far away from that now. 
Number four, get us to a balanced budget. Number five, champion small business. It's small business that creates the jobs in America. And over the last four years, small business people have decided that America may not be the place to open a new business because new business startups are down to a 30-year low. I know what it takes to get small business growing again, to hire people. Now, I'm concerned that the path that we're on has just been unsuccessful. The president has a view very similar to the view he had when he ran four years ago, that a bigger government, spending more, taxing more, regulating more, if you will, trickle-down government would work. That's not the right answer for America. I'll restore the vitality that gets America working again. Thank you. As Democracy Now! expands the debate, we put that question. How would you create more jobs to the Green Party's Dr. Jill Stein? Thank you. And thank you so much for uh, expanding this debate tonight, as you so often do, uh, Amy, here on Democracy Now! Um, so first, I just want to acknowledge that the crisis is not getting better. We still very much have a crisis in our economy. One out of two Americans are in poverty or living at low income and heading towards poverty. About 25 million people are either jobless or working in jobs that do not pay living wages. Uh, there are are millions of people who have lost their homes, approximately 8 million, and the, there is no insight, end in sight to the foreclosure crisis. And we have an entire generation of students who are effectively indentured servants, who are trapped in unforgiving loans and do not have the jobs to pay them back, with a uh, unemployment and underemployment rate of about 50 percent among our young people. So we very much need new solutions. What we hear really from uh, both Barack Obama and and Mitt Romney are essentially the rehash of where we've been, not only for the past four years, but certainly for the eight years before that. Uh, we're hearing more about deregulating business and Wall Street, as if we didn't have enough problem from that already. We're hearing about uh, more uh, 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 tax breaks for the wealthy, and we've seen tax breaks continue over the past many decades across all sectors, really, of, uh, of the tax code, to where the wealthy are uh, not not paying their fair share now, and we're hearing more about uh, energy, dirty energy. So we're calling for a Green New Deal, modeled after the New Deal that actually got us out of the Great Depression. Uh, they created approximately four million jobs in as little as two months, so there's a lot that we can do if we put our mind to it. We're calling for jobs created at the level of our communities, which are nationally funded and which put decisions in the hands of the communities about which kind of jobs they need, both in the green economy and meeting their social needs that would be uh, fo focused and controlled locally, but funded at the national level. Justice Party presidential candidate Rocky Anderson, how would you create jobs? Well, President Obama would like us to ignore what's happened these past four years, and granted, he came into a tough situation. But we have to consider that during the last 43 months, we've had more than 8 percent unemployment. It is the only time in this nation's history that we've had a president that has presided even over three years of over 8 percent unemployment. And the fact is that those 43 months of over 8 percent unemployment during President Obama's term is four months more than all of the months of over 8 percent unemployment from 1948 until President Obama's inauguration. He talks about recovery, all the new jobs. The fact is that in the downturn, 60 percent of the jobs lost were mid-skill and mid-paying jobs, and only 20 percent of the new jobs during the so-called recovery are of that category, the mid-skill and mid-paying jobs. Most of the jobs are low-paying jobs. These new jobs that he brags about, they're in retail sales and in food preparation. So there are things that have been proven in our history to work. 
We could have put in place, and it needs to be done immediately, a WPA, a Works Progress Administration kind of program, where we are investing in the future by building up our nation's rapidly deteriorating infrastructure, putting people to work. In the WPA project, they put eight and a half million people to work. We could be putting 20 to 25 million people to work and making that kind of investment in our nation's future. We need to renegotiate the outrageous free trade agreements and make sure they are fair trade so that we're not discriminating against those employers who want to hire United States workers. Mm. And also, we need to get a handle on health care costs because there are tremendous competitive disadvantages because of the cost of health care in this go country. Back to Third-party presidential candidates Rocky Anderson and Dr. Jill Stein joining in real time through Democracy Now!'s special Expanding the Debate broadcast with Mitt Romney and President Obama as they debated at the University of Denver here in Colorado. Back with the debate in a minute. 